Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Shout joyfully to God, all you on earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Hallelujah. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. For your great strength, your enemies fallen upon you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth, that they may change their ways and return to the path of righteousness. Grant to all those trying to live the Christian ideal the ability to discard all that is contrary to this aim and to hold fast to all that is keeping with it. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Alleluia. O oh Lord, let the light of your confidence shine upon you. You put gladness into my heart. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? 
Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, witnesses to the living Christ. For the 40 days that our Lord was seen following his resurrection, we read that there were many witnesses to his divine presence, from Mary Magdalene and the women, to his first chosen that evening, from the two disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus, to the 500 that Paul makes reference to 
in his first letter to the Corinthians, Jesus was to have all those he appeared to to be his witnesses and to give testimony to all these events. Prior to his ascension, we read in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, these words of Jesus. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. Witnesses. We find in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary some of the definitions of the word witness. It is, first of all, an attestation of the fact of an event. In other words, testimony. It is one who gives evidence to an event. It is one who is asked to testify to an event that has taken place. It is one who has personal knowledge of something, something serving as evidence or proof or sign. As members of the Polish National Catholic Church, we rely on the Word of God as a sacrament, and it is the foundation of our very faith. We also read in Holy Scripture that there were those who were witnesses and they state that their testimony is true. From the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 24. And this is the disciple, John, who is testifying to these things and has written them. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read, Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the Lord, I, Luke, too decide, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. So what did they witness? First of all, they witnessed the life and the times of Jesus, the Messiah. As John had commented in the, at the end of his gospel, there were many other things that Jesus did. His teachings and his healings throughout the four gospels makes accounts of his life. In Matthew chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 30, we read, and large crowds came to him, bringing with them those who were lame, crippled, blind, mute, and many others. And they laid them down at his feet, and he healed them. There were many who witnessed the very passion and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in all four Gospels the accounts of our Lord who suffered death by crucifixion. These events were to be viewed by those who followed the Lord to the very place of his crucifixion. The severity of his passion, as described leading up to him being nailed to the cross, was witnessed by St. John and other women who were present. We read, many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, 
and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. They saw and probably witnessed Jesus' final words. And most importantly, it was witnessed through the piercing of his body, the death blow of a soldier whose lance ruptured what is known today as the per pericardium, or the fluid sac, surrounding his heart, which caused the outpouring of water and blood. They were those who witnessed his death and being taken down and laid in a tomb for his burial. We read in all four gospel accounts that Jesus, after his death, was placed in a new tomb owned by Joseph of Arimathea. And again, three days after his death, there were many who witnessed his resurrection. And so my dear brothers and sisters, today there are many who witnessed the Lord Jesus in their lives. There are those who will testify that indeed the Lord is in their lives, which causes a change, a transformation, a metamorphosis to their old self into a new self. And so Easter, my dear brothers and sisters, is a very special time and it is unique in many ways. I share with you that all other sages and prophets died. In the major religions, Krishna, in Hinduism, it is reported that he died in the second century BC, in his late forties. Buddha, the Lord Buddha, in Buddhism, died approximately 485 to 400 BC at the age of 80. Moses, in Judaism, died circa 1271 BC at the age of 120. Muhammad, blessed be his name, died on June the 8th in the year 632 AD at the age of 60. And that the Lord Jesus died on 14th Nisan, approximately April 14th, in the year 30 AD. And three days later, according to the law of Moses and the prophets, many who came hundreds of years before his birth prophesied of his resurrection and that Jesus today is the only one who was raised from the dead by God his Heavenly Father. May this Easter be a time in which we bear witness of how he has touched our lives and the lives of others. May we continue in his divine presence, for he reminds us that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be among them. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Hallelujah. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, through your holy Eucharist may we receive your grace to help us overcome that which is earthly and learn to love that which is heavenly 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son. Jesus Christ our Lord, all especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he join with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, in our prayers today. Let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us offer prayers for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and pray for their families as well. Let us keep in our prayers the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all the health care workers who on a daily basis strive to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, and all those who suffer violence both here and abroad. Let us pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would protect them through his holy angels and have them come back to their families safe and sound. And let us pray today for all here present and their loved ones whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious virgin, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation, and count to them among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body 
and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in a immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with the lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. Man, at last, unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God, Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Lord, what we have received on earth this day, we receive this day. Because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, may the sacrament we have received be food for our souls and strength for our bodies. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia. 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 May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.
My dear brothers and sisters, again, I welcome you as we offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this third Sunday of Easter. It is my prayer and my hope that this Easter season might be a joyous time for you, that the good Lord, through his infinite mercies and graces, would bless you and your loved ones. Again, I thank you for sharing with us, and we look forward to you sharing with us again our holy rite of Holy Mass. We will conclude this morning with the offering of prayer for all intentions, and we will also offer a final prayer for the repose of the souls of our departed loved ones. May God be with all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.